folks, Bill Schmoker here for Polar Trek and the International Continental Shelf Survey. Uh, I'm here in my classroom in Boulder, Colorado, but in a few weeks I'll be heading to Alaska to board the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Healy. And in my journals from sea, I'll be using a lot of shipboard terms. So I wanted to go over some of this special vocabulary. Let's start with the word cutter. The Coast Guard defines a cutter as any of its ships over 65 feet long. The Healy is also an icebreaker. Uh, as you would guess, an icebreaker is a ship that can break through the ice. Now, not all cutters are icebreakers, but the Healy is not only a cutter, it's also an icebreaker. Length is just what you'd expect it to be. It's the total distance from the front to the back of the ship. In the case of the Healy, that is 420 feet long. And the Healy is the biggest ship in the Coast Guard's fleet. We can also talk about the beam of a ship, which is a fancy way of saying the width. And the beam of the Healy is 82 feet. We also talk about a ship's draft. A draft is how much water a ship needs to float. And the Healy takes 29 feet of water to float in. If it's any shallower than that, it will hit bottom. We usually don't talk about the front of a ship. Instead, we say the bow. And we don't call it the back of a ship. We call that the stern. Right and left can be very confusing because that depends on which way you are facing. So instead, on a ship, we talk about the port and the starboard sides. Port side is always lit with a red lantern. And so I put it in red here in case you're looking at a ship at night. The red light is on the port side, and the port side would be the left side as you're facing the bow. But of course, if you're facing the stern, it's your right side. And if you're looking out over the port side, it's straight ahead. So instead of trying to get confused, we just say the port side. And the opposite of that is the starboard side, which is always lit with green, so you can tell at night which way a ship is facing. Uh, the starboard side would be the right side of the ship as you're facing the bow. If you are going towards the bow of a ship, you're going forward, or fore for short, but you can be all the way on the stern looking forward, or you can be on the bow looking forward. So that's just towards the front or towards the bow. And the opposite of that is aft. So anything aft would be towards the stern of the ship. Another convenient way to discuss directions on a ship regards the wind. We have the windward, or sometimes it's shortened to winnard. And that is looking into the wind. The opposite of that is the leeward or the leeward side, which is looking downwind. So if the wind is hitting you in the face, you are looking windward. If it's hitting you on the back of the head, you are looking leeward. Uh, helicopters, for example, will approach the ship from the leeward side in order to land safely. The bottom part of a ship, the part that keeps the water out and makes it float, is the hull. You can almost think of the hull as a foundation that the rest of the ship, ship is built on. And on the very bottom of the hull, the part you start with and build up from is the keel. So the keel is the very bottom center line of the ship. Along the keel are weights that help keep the ship stable and upright. And that weight on the bottom of the ship is called ballast. One thing I'll talk about later is the Healy special dynamic ballast system that helps to stabilize the ship in heavy seas. Above that, we have the superstructure. So the superstructure is everything that is built up above the hull. And on a ship like the Healy, there's a top part of that superstructure that has all the control center and the commander, and the ship is steered and controlled from the bridge. Within the bridge, you have the helm, and the helm is how you steer the ship. It's probably a steering wheel, but we say that someone is at the helm if they are in control of the ship. A few things about ships that are also different than a typical school or house. Uh, a school or a house has floors, but on a ship, a floor is a deck. And one thing that can happen on a ship is a lot of water can hit the deck that you don't want to stay there. So holes in the deck that drain the water out are called scuppers. 
at school or at your house, you might be in a room, but on a ship, you are in your cabin. So a cabin is a room on a ship. Of course, at your house or in school, we cook in a kitchen, but on the ship, cooking goes on in the galley. When Mother Nature calls around here, we say we go to the bathroom, but on a ship, the bathroom is called a head. Now, the Healy has the capability of carrying two helicopters, and those need to be protected, and the large room where the helicopters stay is called a hangar. At home or in school, rooms are divided up by walls, but in a ship, the different cabins are divided by bulkheads. So a bulkhead is like a wall on a ship. Of course, we have windows on a ship. We would call a window a porthole. One of the other main differences about being on a ship is you're on a moving sea and the regular up and down waves that traverse oceans are called the swell. And swells can make a ship move. And there's two main axes that a ship will move along. One is called roll. And I want to demonstrate roll with my son's Lego ship here. A roll is a side to side movement of a ship going from starboard to port. And rolls are kind of notorious for making people seasick. The other type of motion you can have on a ship is called the pitch. And as you probably can guess, a pitch is going to be a front to back, a bow to stern movement of a ship. And a ship can have a combination of pitch and roll, particularly if they're in really rough seas. I hope you don't have too much of that. As the ship is traveling, it's going to leave behind frothy water, and that's called the ship's wake. And the direction that the ship is traveling in is known as the ship's course. We can also talk about taking a bearing from a ship. A bearing is a direction from the ship, and it may not be the direction the ship is traveling in. So you may be going, let's say, on a course due north and see an iceberg bearing 90 degrees or bearing to the east. Ships like the Healy have radar systems. This sends out a radio wave and it can bounce off objects to help the Healy determine where they are, especially if it's foggy or dark. So it can find other ships, icebergs, rocky outcrops, uh, and things like that. The Healy also has a GPS system and that's global positioning system that helps the Healy know exactly where it is in the world using a constellation of satellites. The Healy has two very sophisticated sonar systems. Sonar sends a sound wave down to the seafloor and back and lets the Healy measure the depth and also map out seafloor features. And when you measure depth from a ship, we say we're taking a sounding. In the old days, that may have just been tying a weight on a rope, but now we usually take soundings using sonar. One of our jobs on the Healy will be taking core samples. So to core or do coring is to take a uh, tubular plug out of the sea floor. I'll be talking about how we do that, as well as how we do dredging, which is using a big scoop to scoop up samples from the sea floor. And the Healy is going to have a companion uh, Canadian icebreaker equipped with a seismic system that can not only map the sea floor, but beneath that using high energy sound waves that it generates from air explosions in the water. And I'll be talking a lot more about that too. If you want a summary of all these terms, you can download this student journal, and it'll help you keep up with my trip as well, at this address here. And I have summarized the terms for you. Just print it front to back on legal paper, and you'll have your own student journal to keep track of me as I'm going. And please, throughout the journey, if you think of a question or want me to address something that I haven't, use this Ask the Team button that you'll find at the top of every journal page on the International Continental Shelf Survey. Thanks for tuning in. That's all for now.